Right, let's get going. Um, hello and welcome everyone to this uh, webinar as part of Chartership uh, Week for CRPR. Um, my name is Paul Compton. I am Head of Communications and Engagement at um, Devon and Somerset Fire and Rescue Service. I am also um, a CRPR Council member and recently a Chartered Practitioner. Uh, and that is why we're here today. We're here to uh, talk about Chartership and hear from people who have been through that um, hear about people's motivations, the benefits that people have got out of chartership, but more importantly, uh, the process and what it's like to go through that and become assessed, uh, become assessed to become chartered. Um, hopefully that will give you all some really good information to inform your own journey uh, and hopefully motivate you to go for a uh, chartered assessment. And I, I hope that at the end of this, you do seriously consider it. Uh, and that we attempt to demystify it for you and uh, reassure you about uh, your capabilities of going through that process. Um, so we have a range of really great speakers with us um, who will be able to share their experiences with you. Um, first of all, I'm just going to go through a couple of housekeeping rules. Um, you will only be able to see speakers on the screen. Um, so there are other delegates and you'll be able to see the attendees list, but you'll only be able to see <coughs> those people on the panel who are speaking. Um, there will be a Q&A at the end of it. So we've got a couple of um, themed sessions and then we've got a question and answer session. So please think of any questions you've got as you're going through and you're listening to the speakers, uh, think of anything you want to ask. Now's your opportunity to really get that across and we'll do our best to answer it ourselves. Uh, we've also got the fantastic Maz Begum from uh, CIPR who um, is able to answer any questions about specific process things from a CIPR point of view and she will do that in the chat as well. Um, the event is being recorded. Um, obviously, you won't be on screen for any time, so um, hopefully that's not a concern for anybody. Um, but it will be available uh, through the usual CIPR portal uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, there is also um, points available for this. Uh, obviously, that's not the real reason why you're here to harvest points, uh, but that will definitely help along the way to that 60 for the end of the year. So you get 10 points from today's session. Uh, so. To start us off, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my chart ship journey, um, and then I'm going to hand over to Steve Kabati Salifu, who's going to talk about his experience, um, his recent experience of going through the assessment. Uh, and then we're going to hand over to Kat and Adiba, who uh, have also recently gone through, and they're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, the buddy scheme, so the chart ship buddy scheme that's available, uh, something that. I know has helped a lot of people through their recent chartership journeys. Um, so that's going to be the plan for today. And then we'll get into the, the Q&A session, hopefully around about half 12, and we'll have a good amount of time for answering those questions. Um, so just to kind of kick off and talk about chartership from my perspective, my chartership journey actually started in 2017, and it took quite a while, it took six years uh, for me to actually then go through the process. And I was reflecting on that quite a bit this morning. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that, which I'll go into. Um, though, back in 2017, I attended an event very similar to this. Um, it wasn't as well attended. Um, there was about four of us hearing from two people who've been through the chartered assessment process. It was on a rainy day in a hotel room in Bournemouth. Uh, and I remember it really well. And it's amazing how on that day, what was said to me on that day, six years later, when I was preparing for my own chartership uh, assessment, how much of that was still fresh in my mind and hearing those experiences. And I think that's the importance of events like this today, is to hear those experiences and hear how people have prepared for that, what they've experienced when they've gone through that, and be able to reflect then from your own preparation and what, how you will approach it in terms of your success as becoming chartered. So I'd really take time to listen to what is said today and ask those questions. Um, for me at the time, um, going back to that 2017, I don't think chartership was something I was strong, I felt quite strongly about at the time. It was just, it was another development area that was interesting to me. Quite like the idea of being a chartered PR pr practitioner. I've been working um, in uh, the, the field for quite a long time and it was a na nice natural progression. Uh, I'll admit the cost was a bit of a barrier. As a public sector worker, that would have had to be 
picked up by myself rather than my organization. So it wasn't something that I was going to take lightly, um, you know, investing that amount of money. And that's not necessarily the reasons why it took me then six years to become chartered. Uh, I think one of the reasons for that was the support that is available today is far, far, far more advanced and credit to the CIPR for, you know, what they have in place. Things that you'll hear from Kat and Adibra, like the Buddy Scheme, uh, if I had that at the time, I think I would have, would have definitely gone for it. Um, the vast amount of information that's available through the CIPR website and in, in other places as well. Uh, the experiences of hearing lots, lots of people definitely would have made me feel more confident and I think it probably was a confidence thing at the end of the day. Everybody probably sits there, um, no matter what your experience, and sit there and go, is it really me? Is it my time? Have I, am I, have I got enough experiences? Am I going to be able to um, talk about as much in that assessment process? And I felt that. I felt that right up to the day. I felt that kind of moment of panic as the, as the session started. Um, in some ways that's quite healthy keeps us on our toes in other ways it can stop us from uh progressing and and going down that route um i think we all have that a little bit of imposter syndrome in us i think we all have that self-doubt um what has really kind of pushed me is seeing other people go through it and coming out the other side with that feeling of actually you know it wasn't as scary as they thought it was and there was a lot of support going through that um so for me that was the bit um, that came up to my decision at the, the beginning of this year in the 75th year of the CIPR and being a council member as well I kind of felt well I probably need to go for it and now's the right time for me I still doubted myself right up until the minute but after going through that process uh, and really preparing for it remembering what was said to me in that hotel room in Bournemouth six years ago and applying that to my own practice of where I am now uh, did massively help me so that's a very quick rundown of my chartership journey. Um, but I'm going to pass over to Steve now, who's going to talk about his journey um, and share his views. Steve, over to you. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, I think that's a complete opposite of my chartership experience. Um, I joined the CIPR last year in April. And within a span of one year, uh, yeah, I'm here as a chartered practitioner. I must say that uh, when I joined the CIPR, well, I've been practicing PR in West Africa, precisely Ghana, for almost 13 years. And when I joined the CIPR, I was looking for something that recognizes my experience in the industry. I was also looking for something that... Uh, would quickly identify me as somebody who belongs to a profession that is highly valued. So um, a lot of people did mention that having the chartership gives you that badge of professionalism. Uh, it also demonstrates your PR experience and it also demonstrates your commitment to, uh, to ethical practice. So I looked at it and I said there was the urgent need for me to start the process. So the moment I joined, I started preparing. So I actually, it just took me like one year to prepare. Um, and in the preparation process, I actually joined webinars just like you. Uh, the first webinar I joined was organized by the CIPR International, and it was just something similar like this, encouraging members to actually uh, get into the process, um, register to charter. So I made sure that I log in enough points that will enable me uh, to qualify for the chartership process. Now, some of the key things that I did was that um, I read around most of the resources that are available. So for instance, uh, the chartership handbook is very, very key. I would call it, you, if you want a charter, make that book your Bible because it contains everything that you would need to, that will guide you for the, through the chartership process. Um, another critical book that uh, members ought to read around is the CIPR skills guide that's on the code of conduct. Uh, it's very, very critical when you read it. It gives you uh, a clear ex I mean, explanation of uh, uh, what to expect. Then um, before on the 
I also wrote a uh, read through a thought piece that was written by somebody who had not passed the process. And so it gave me an understanding of what actually went through the day and why he couldn't make it on the day. So at least it guided me. And more importantly, um, I read an article written by Kat, who is here with us, uh, on her recent experience within the um, going through the process. And I think that it also gave me a perspective. So I read from somebody who didn't make it and somebody who made it, and it gave me a broader understanding of what to expect on the day itself. Now, it is important to also read around the communication frameworks and models. However, you are not expected to go deep and explain what they actually mean. But it is important that in setting your examples, you need to reference them uh, as and when it's necessary. But then one key thing that uh, we need to realize in all of these things is that you need to draw on your own experiences. It doesn't matter if you have 13 years experience, if you have one year experience, you need to draw on your own experiences. Yes, I attended a webinar with people who had more experience than I, people who were at the top levels in their professional career, but then you have to draw your own experiences, even if it is one year, you need to do that. Yeah. And uh, most importantly, which... Uh, Adiba and then uh, Kat will talk about later. I also reached out. I had a mentor who guided me through the whole process. So you need a mentor. It's very, very important because and most important, pick someone who has gone through the process because they'll be able to guide you on what to expect. My mentor actually sent me uh, resources that I needed to read uh, to prepare for it. Yes, so apart from uh, these resources that... Uh, I had to go, I had to read through. I believe that uh, at the end of this session, you might share links to some of these resources. I, on the day itself, the day itself uh, was quite easy. Um, what made it easy was the incredible support of my colleagues. We need to remember that this particular session is not an, this uh, assessment is, it's not an exams, uh, so you need not worry so much about whether you are making, you are giving the right answers or not. You need to understand that it's more or less a discussion and you need to draw on your own experiences over the years. And you also need to understand that there's no mark for who has performed better than the other. So you need to also understand that uh, just be yourself on the day. So when we went in on the day, they just assess us on three key areas of the PR practice. That's on ethics, strategy, and leadership. And as Paul has mentioned already, before you actually go into the assessment process, they send you uh, case studies two weeks before uh, the assessment. And once they send you the case studies, it contained the key topics that you discuss on the day. So what I did was that I looked at each of the case studies, I read through the case studies, then I prepared answers to each of the questions. But then you need to understand that on the day, actually, on the day of it, and on the day itself, you are not, uh, you may be allowed to bring in notes to the discussions, I mean, to the assessment, but you are not allowed, I mean, it's not appropriate for you to read I mean, directly from the, the answers, the prepared answers. So you only bring it in as a guide. So I had the answers prepared to each of the questions that were prepared, that is after I had them. So what I made sure was that every single day I had to go through each of the questions and draw my own experiences. But then you need to also appreciate the fact that there are instances where some questions will pop up that you do not have experiences, examples from your own practice. So you need to draw on current practice within the industry. And it is allowed for you to leverage on other examples that uh, uh, are in the industry to guide in whatever the answers that you are going to give. Then one interesting thing also happened during my assessment. Uh, the fact is that some, there are instances where you might not, maybe it's just a discussion, so they'll ask 
one question and each of you will have the opportunity to answer. But then there are instances where you might not probably have an answer to a specific question that will give that they pose to you. So what I did was that there were there was one instance that a question was supposed to be and immediately I didn't have an answer. So what I told the moderator was that, look, the assessor was that you go through my colleagues, probably by the time that you come back, I have something to you. I think that it is important that you are yourself during the period because it's not an exam. The assessors are there to guide you and to support you to succeed. And that is the most important aspect of the assessment process. So I, I give thumbs up to the assessors on the specific day, Ben Verinda and then uh, Amanda Kolma, who are very supportive in the process. Yes, so I think that these are the key things that uh, uh, you need to appreciate on the, on the day of the assessment itself. Now, one other thing I, I need to mention is that on the day itself, I enjoyed the incredible support of my colleagues. Everybody that was on the assessment uh, process wanted everyone to succeed. So you would find that once, when you, you are given the opportunity to speak, you would find your colleagues giving you the encouragement and all that. And that is what you need to, uh, to bear in mind when you go through the whole process. People, your colleagues will be there to guide you and to support you because it's not an exam. It is something that is meant to assess your experience for you to reflect on the experiences uh, of the day. Now, one other thing you need to appreciate is that the questions that they sent you two weeks before the assessment might not come in the format that you see them. In actual fact, there may be a curveball where the questions will be rephrased in different format. So you need to prepare yourself to the fact that these questions might change at some point in time. But then the key issues, you must not miss the key issues. So that is one thing that uh, uh, happened during my process and I understand, I mean, it helped me a lot. And I remember that there was a point that, for instance, we're supposed to start with, uh, we started with ethics, we're supposed to, the next uh, discussion was supposed to be leadership, but then they changed it to strategy. So it affected all of us because at this point in time, we have mentally prepared our mind that we'll start with ethics, their strategy and leadership. So in preparation, you need to psych yourself that at every point in time, it could be, it, it, we, you could start from any of the, I mean, any of the processes. So you need to psych yourself to that, to that as well. Now for anybody that is preparing for this, I need to first of all, let you know that you do not need to be intimidated by the process. Um, People might have had 30 years experience in the industry, but you can as well do well. The only thing is that you need to prepare and reflect on your own experiences. Thank you. Thanks very much, Steve. Um, that's a really great rundown of um, you know, your experiences and the process. Um, Please do everybody think about um, Steve's experiences and got any further questions, um, ask them to us and we will we'll put them to the panel uh, further on. Um, particularly love the um, bear around the, um, the chart assessment um, work and the, the pack that you get before that and, you know, and treating that book like your Bible. I think that is that is definitely something you, you really find in terms of, you know, really absorbing all of that information and being properly prepared. Um, Going to move to um, Kat and Adiba, who are going to talk a bit about the Chattership Buddy Scheme now. Um, Kat, Adiba, can you please um, give your experiences? Yeah, no problem. So, so hi. Yeah, no problem. Hello. Um, so, firstly, I will chat a little bit about what the Chattership Support Buddy Scheme actually is. Um, so, when I was going through the process, it was something that I um, inquired about on the on the website. And realise that there's actually a 90 strong network of CIPR members who are already chartered and are offering up their services to basically be a buddy to support you through this process. 
So you can reach out to them. You can, you know, they will share their experiences of becoming chartered and offer you advice on preparing for the chartership assessment. Um, they are a real mixture of professionals. So, you know, they come from in-house and agency um, and they are experts in their specific fields. So we had, there are buddies who work uh, specifically in PR, but there are also buddies that, that come from the field of internal communications as well. Um, so what I would probably say is reach out to people who are, come from your background, um, like, like I did. Um, that's basically why I, I reached out to the people that I reached out to. And I'll explain a little bit about that in a little while. Um, but basically, the main reasons why I chose this scheme were just to stop procrastinating and get out of my, my own head. Um, being somebody who works completely remote, uh, you can have a lot of time to think about um you know, what are they going to ask me? What if I get it wrong? Am I good enough? All of those kinds of questions. So actually reaching out and speaking to a real live person with lived experience of the process was really, really invaluable. Um, I was going to say it would be better than reading a blog. I'm really, really glad that uh, that Steve read my blog. Um, but, you know, you can, you can garner bits of information from blogs and do as much research online as you, as you like. But for me, I prefer to, to actually speak to a real live person who's been through it. Um, and, you know, they're more than happy to, to kind of guide you and um, give you their, you know, their, their experiences of what it felt like when the case studies first landed, um, you know, how they approached their two year CPD plan and that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah. So in terms of how I was supported and how it helped me. What I would say is, like I said before, go out, do your research on the buddy and who aligns with you and your experience. So I approached uh, Gemma Pettiman um, because she had a very similar background to me. My background had previously been a lot of communications in public sector and also third sector comms. So it was nice to chat to somebody who had that same experience, who, you know, had kind of approached the questions from the same level of experience as what I had. I found that quite comforting. Um, and also Gemma now works for herself as well. So it was that kind of understanding the transition from working in-house to working for yourself and being able to give different examples from different stages in your career. Um, another buddy of mine was Nafisa Shafiq. Um, basically, I spotted her on LinkedIn. So even though she wasn't an official buddy, uh, we'd been connected for a little while and I saw that she was coming through in the latest cohort of chartered professionals, which also at the same time scared me half to death because I'm thinking, oh my God, all these people are coming through and they're getting chartered and what if I don't do it? But when I reached out to her on LinkedIn, you know, she was like, look, more than happy to have a chat, offered up her support. You know, we had a we had a quick phone call, um, you know, later that week and it really just kind of put my yeah kind of put a lot of the fears that I had to bed and um, you know and she was really supportive in in terms of sharing her two-year CPD plan and kind of how she approached it and structured it and in terms of you know showing that progression uh, which I really found really really invaluable and um, and also they shared how they'd approach different case study questions and things like that and a bit like Steve said they can give you that anecdotal stuff so you know, it for my 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 experience was that it wasn't um, linear, so the the questions didn't come in the the order that you received them in terms of the case studies. So just understanding that and kind of getting on the front foot that you know that actually this might not be asked in the this order, and to think on your feet and look from different perspectives, that was really really useful. Um, so I guess I would recommend finding a support buddy um, because A, you know, you'll always have that cheerleader and somebody in your corner um, and B, you know, they, there are people that are willing and, and able out there that, that want you to get in touch. Uh, I know it can feel a little bit like, oh, you feel like you're imposing on people's time, but that's the reason that they are part of the buddy scheme and it is to help you and, and champion you through that process. Um, and one of those people, 
um, is somebody like Adiba. So I'll hand over to Adiba. I don't know which side you're on, Adiba, because my screen's different. So I'm handing over to you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so uh, I'm Adiba. So my experience of the buddy scheme was very, um, it was informal. Um, after I got chartered, a couple of my peers and colleagues uh, that uh, I'm connected on LinkedIn and connected through other sort of social media channels uh, approached me uh, via LinkedIn, Twitter and, and dropped me a message and, and WhatsApp to say, I'm going for it or I've registered and the packs come through and that mad panic moment. Um, can I speak to you? I, I see that you're chartered. So uh, so we arranged a, a quick phone call or email um, and then chatted through their um, experience and what, the, what worried them, uh, what the concerns they had. So it was approaching them from a very similar way that I approached it. Um, I, uh, when I enrolled and went registered for the chartership last year, um, the buddy scheme and some extra webinars and workshops were part of the uh, the, the registration process like this year though because it's 75 years of um CIPR it was a reduced rate uh, for you to register last year as part of the package you uh, buddy scheme was thrown in I think it was because it was new um so but the the help that like uh, uh Kat was saying that I got for my buddy was uh, it was imme immeasurable and it was really helpful to share concerns and thoughts and worries with them and then feel like oh they've got the same concern <laughs> they, they also went through that you know the whole life cycle of you know have I done the right thing am I experienced enough you know will I be able to pass all of that so you know it's so that that was my experience of the buddy scheme uh, and and being a buddy um, so it's just being there at the other end of the phone email and not just once, you know, if it means that it's a midnight call or a late evening, whatever suits your, uh, you know, one of the, per the persons that uh, approach me has got young children. So it's fitting in around them um, and it's just listening, but then sharing how you can you know what you've been through and what your process was like and how you dealt with those worries as well and you'll you'll find that uh that they've got the same worries as you and the same stumbling blocks or even if they're just thinking about it you know why they're thinking about it so everybody has the same sort of worries and concerns so um the common questions and concerns that i had was uh their ability to be able to pass and you know, you know, if you do, if you don't pass, then there's always the option of resitting, and uh, the advantage is, and uh, there's always an advantage to failure, <laughs> is that you already know what to expect, and it's that fear of the unknown that worries everybody. Uh, uh, you know, that when you when it's something new or something that you're unaware of, um, that you um, are approaching, and um, the pressure uh, to remember once you've receive the pack you've got three case studies to look at you've got a set of questions that go with the case studies and as Steve said the 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 biggest le learning that you can get from those case studies and the thing to allay your fears is that recall your experiences so gather your thoughts in your head and the opportunity to get the case studies two weeks before is that and this is the advice that I gave the the, the uh, uh, chartership. Uh, it would be chartership um, uh, practitioners was that approach it from this angle in that uh, recall your experiences, gather your thoughts in your head. That's the opportunity that you've got for two when you get the pack and, um, you know, write it down. You could take it into the, um, the session itself. Um, you know, the the other question was, you know, have I got enough experience? Is my length of experience, is my knowledge um, and skill set uh, suitable to go for a practitioner? I've, I've never been a leader, for instance, um, but then I've got a se session on leadership. It's not necessarily about being a leader. It's how you've led projects and communications and PR of 
very much project led so you're always leading from the front uh you know you're leading when you're advising with you're leading when you're leading a project or a campaign so you're always leading you don't necessarily have to be the head of communications and pr to have led um so it, it's that understanding that you know and then reading around the subjects that was the other question you know when you receive the pack you know I've got enough time you know will I be able to read all that you know I've got my day job I've got family I've got other commitments um but it's just making sure that firstly you list down your knowledge and experience and then read around those subjects um and again the other concerns that that uh, my uh, sort of uh the chartership buddies had was uh, around, um, you know, you know how hard is it, you know, and 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 it is intense, but at the end of the day, like Steve said, it's not an exam; it's a conversation, um, and the support from your peers on the day that are part of your cohort is imme again imme immeasurable. It's you you do support each other and because it's not an exam it's not a competition uh you will get that support on the day as well um and uh, the other concern that they had was around failure again it's it's that fear of the unknown and you do get a second chance um what advice did i offer um uh, to anyone who's having similar thoughts and worries so yeah i was nervous uh, and reassuring them that everybody goes through this life cycle of worry, uh, you know, am, am I doing the right thing? Will I fail? Will I pass? Um, and that's what your buddy will give you, that support network and being able to speak to them whenever you need to speak to them. And it's not just a one off, it, you know, they're there for you and to support you through that. And like Kat said, if you find somebody that's a, from a similar um sector or in a similar in-house or agency uh, or if you you know a solely I mean I found somebody who was independent practitioner because I'd just gone it alone so again you find somebody that sort of suits you either in-house or independent um, and you will find that um, everybody's imposter syndrome those that with that with and without suddenly uh, is alive and kicking um, and again you know everybody's been there uh you know and, and the reasons for doing it again that's that the advice is you know most of us do it because we want the that to say that we are professionals we are you know we practice ethically we're good leaders we understand strategy and um, but also for validation as a profession and again that's probably the same reason as everybody else uh, and it and the other advice that you know that they're there to sort of ease take some of the pressure off you um as a buddy so the one advice i did give and i gave it to all all of my um chartership buddies is that prepare so when you receive the pack two weeks before have set some time aside i mean one of the my cohort actually took some time off um, I think she took a week off or something, a good few days, because she knew that life um, and work wouldn't give her the time in the evenings or at the weekends to be able to actually sit down, read the packs, read all the, the other additional material that Steve was talking about and have enough time. So I think one key takeaway from this session or in future, you know, if you do decide to go for it, is that do prepare um, do read all the material that the the um, the pack suggests, but also any sessions that you attend around chartership that suggest, um, because it will help you on the day. Um, if if nothing else, it, it helps you gather your thoughts for ideas and case studies that you've been involved in. Um, access the resources that are online. CIPR has. Uh, absolutely loads of online resources uh, you know speak to other people that have been through chartership you know link with them um, and we are a very good community uh, as practitioners we're at, we're there to help and um, you know access the buddy scheme itself um, and always remember <laughs> uh, no question is a silly question Thank you very much, Kat and Adiba. Um, really good experiences of, of how that buddy scheme has helped. Um, 
and certainly um, I think the biggest kind of thing to take out of all of these conversations is just how many people want to support people to get through this process. This is not something where people are set up to fail in any way. Uh, and everyone from the buddies, from CIPR staff, from uh, people that you'll see on the chartered assessment day, including the assessors, are all willing people on to pass and supporting people to get there. We want to see more chartered practitioners um, out there um, and you know, improving that understanding of, um, of, our, uh, of our profession as a strategic um, a strategic profession and something that is very valid so it is important that you remember that people are there and they're there to support right going on to questions then um so we have had some questions through um so cat in terms of your blog post uh, which is given a, a fantastic plug by steve um and has created a lot of interest uh, can we where can we find that and can we share that with people? You can, absolutely. So it's actually um, on my LinkedIn profile. Um, so I've shared the link uh, with fellow panellists. So I think if Maz wants to maybe forward that on to um, participants afterwards, um, then, yeah, it's a, a, a warts and all, very honest opinion of, of kind of my my experience and uh I think uh, I think people get a lot a lot from it hopefully yeah and um I I've read that blog post we, we were on the same chartered assessment day and uh, that so resonated with me everything that you wrote in that in that blog post and, and brought it all back for me <laughs> <laughs> great um so hopefully that will help and I think has been said uh, quite time again you know there's obviously this session today where you hear experiences from people do read the other experiences that are out there. There, there are videos uh, all this week, CIPR are sharing um, case studies from people and videos. Just find out as much as you can from other people who've been through it. It will definitely help to, uh, as I said before, demystify it. Um, the other uh, question is around, um, is there an associated fee for chartership? Um, Deba, would you like to pick that one up? So the, the, the initial fee is uh, when you register to become chartership, but then every year you've got to maintain to maintain your chartership. You've got to ensure that you uh, always have six, 60 point CPD. That's mandatory. Otherwise, you lose your chartership. But this year, there's the additional 15 extra points that you can get for uh, there's that uh, sort of campaign going because it's 75 years, you know, can you try and get 75 points? Um, you know, I, I've registered to try and do it. So uh, I don't know if everybody else can, but it, but it's one of those things. It doesn't require a lot uh, of, of work once you get into the flow of things. I mean, I was doing uh, CPD when I was in-house, but um, it was ne not necessarily, uh, although I'd been a member of CIPR registering it, I've only started registering in the last couple of years, but um, I think it just makes it more, uh, you're more proactive when it comes to maintaining your learning and development. Um, and it just ma makes sure that you're, you're there, uh, making sure that your learning and development is up to date. Um, and, it, and it's something that is very uh, close to my heart as a sole practitioner, but also has always been, you know, constantly learning what, what best practices out there. Yeah, it's a, it's a, um, there's no additional fee for uh, maintaining your charge other than making sure that your CPD is at 60 points every year and you've registered it, logged yeah. it. So you yeah. still continue to pay your annual subscriptions to CIPR. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The cost itself of chartership is uh, £300 plus VAT. Um, and um, yeah, and you need to still continue those uh, CPD points afterwards. Chartership doesn't give you uh, a freedom not to continue, not to discontinue no. your CPD. No, no, no. Um, no. So, I'm not. <laughs> um, and it's really important. Uh, I think as chartered practitioners, we have a, a level of responsibility now to keep improving on our practice and and uh, and lead the way really on that. And um, I think that's something from chartered practitioners that I've come across that everybody sees that as a, a huge responsibility uh, that is now on on our shoulders which is a it's a good place to be in it's definitely something that yeah. you do suddenly feel this slightly kind of lifting up of your importance of 
how yeah. you There's need to keep on top of your pride. secret. Yeah. Thank There's you. an element of pride, I think, uh, amongst all practitioners that are chartered and, and that sort of push to get everybody chartered. Absolutely. Um, so a question here around the, the buddy system um, and whether uh, people just reach out to anyone who think might be su suitable in the network and approach them for tips or advice. Is there another process to be able to access that buddy system? Uh, Kat, would you like to pick that one up? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there is a long list on the CIPR um, members portal um, and you'll be able to access that um, via the chart ship page. And obviously, if you've downloaded the chart ship um, week pack, there'll be information in there dedicated about the buddy scheme as well. So, yeah, so I, like I say, I did a mixture. So I, I reached out to Gemma through the buddy scheme on that long list on the CIPR website. Um, but because obviously my network on LinkedIn is full of comms and PR practitioners anyway, like I say, I'd, I'd started noticing that pe cohorts of people were starting to come through and were obviously shouting about the fact that they'd just been chartered. Um, so actually, I kind of was a little bit cheeky and, and reached out to some of the people who had just literally just fresh out of the process, had just put all their icons on there. Um, I'd reached out to them directly. So, so yeah, so there's the, the formal buddy scheme, which you can, like I say, go through on the CIPR website. Or you'll find that you know most people are more than happy to shout about the experience that they've just been through, um, because it's been such a you know a slog and it, people have worked so hard to get there. They're more than happy to share that experience with you and and kind of shout it from the rooftop. So yeah, formal route, informal route. Use your LinkedIn network um, to the best of your ability as well. Brilliant. And yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, go on, David. Do you want to say something? No, I was just going to say I'd, I'd agree with that. Uh, yeah, there is the the former route uh, of the buddy, and the you know, have, however many from different sectors, but also you know, if you see anybody on LinkedIn or on Twitter or anywhere on the socials, um, in your own network or not, just shouting about it, uh, do get in contact because I think. You know, as I said, I think there's an element of pride and we want each other to be to be uh, sort of chartered and to uh, sort of for the profession to become more professional and, you know, ethically practicing. So, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that anybody will turn you away. <laughs> and, and it's, and it's yeah. free, the formal, the formal yes. it, that's what I should should say as well. I've seen some of the Q&A's that, you know, you're obviously, you're obviously paying your fee for your chartership. However, the buddy scheme is completely free and that's, you know, yeah. you should absolutely take advantage of, of any free advice that is out there and available to you. Yeah. And you can also log different bits and pieces, you know. Um, I did a lot of that when I was doing all my research with the webinars, reading blogs, get it all logged and you'll be surprised that you, you'll rack up at least 20 or 30 points by just doing your research for your chartership. And then you get your points on the day as well, so... That's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I think that uh, even myself, before I chatted, I had to reach out to somebody who um, had recently just chatted uh, through the informal process. And she was more than willing to help me through the process. So I think that just as my colleagues have said, um, we need to reach out to our colleagues. They, they are more than willing to help us get through the process. Definitely. Um, as the diva said, uh, I don't think anyone will turn anyone away from that. Uh, you know, we all have that responsibility now to support others to do that because we've, we've all been there. We've been through that process and recognised the importance of, of getting that extra support. Um, so we've got an extra um, question in, in terms of um, do you have to pay for to reset if you do not pass the first time? So Maz can stop me if I'm wrong. I believe that the reset is free. You get one extra ch shot of that. Everyone's nodding, so I'm not completely off tangent of that. You get one extra shot if you don't pass the first time uh, at doing it, and then following that, and you will uh, um, you will need to pay again. I remember from my chart um, days when back in those six years ago when I did that, and I think it's probably still the same now. Very few people fail the second time. I think most people once get to that second time. Uh, if they haven't made it the first time, we'll, we'll find out they pass. Um, so um, I think that is um, is kind of a signal that if you, if you go through and give it a go uh, and you don't quite get it the first time, you know, that test of experiencing all of that will still help you then 
to really nail it the second time. Um, I think the way the success rates are going at the moment, there are majority of people because they are so well prepared um, going into it um, that quite a lot of people are, are getting through that process in that, in that first um, stage. So um, we've kind of run out of questions. I just wanted to pose one extra question to the, the panel. If you still have any questions, please do feed them through. We've probably got about another five minutes of asking questions. Um, but I just want to ask a, a quick question of the panelists in terms of what have you experienced since becoming chartered? How has that helped or benefited you? Um, and Steve, if I can come to you first. Yes, thanks, Paul. I, I think that is has been a very rewarding process. Um, since becoming chartered, um, I realized that uh, a lot of people within our industry uh, begin to see that the chartership is is real. It's something that is is, is valuable. Uh, unlike uh, PR, many people are only aware that in the accounting profession there's chartership and all that. And when I made some noise around it, many people came asking, "What is the chartership all about? How can I get chartered? And uh, to what extent would it improve my profession?" So for me, it's been a couple of weeks uh, since I got chartered but I can tell you the value that it brings to me because they respect people see that you are a professional. They believe that you have the experiences because the chartership is that badge that you carry along that tells people that, look, this guy is, is, is an industry professional and he's been recognized, so he does his work ethically. So for me, the recognition is key. Brilliant, thanks, Steve. Uh, Deba, how's... How's your experience been since becoming chartered? Um, I think for me, it's given me the uh, the uh, this uh, uh, ability to to share my learnings. Um, so being approached uh, informally and formally to to buddy uh, and share my experiences, share uh, how it felt, and just just to be able to help, I think uh, is what it's given me in the last few months. Um, that opportunity. And to push it even more uh, so that we're all charted and, you know, yeah. Great. Thanks, Adiba. Uh, Kat, how about your experiences? So I would say probably the most important thing for me was it was boosting my confidence. Um, I found that, yeah, I've just been a, a lot more, you know, it's having that faith and belief in, in what you do. And even though I've worked, you know, in industry for over 15 years, actually having that badge of honour and knowing, knowing that you've kind of gone through that process has really boosted how I am um, and how obviously I approach my clients. And, you know, I, I think even just having that kind of accolade on your LinkedIn profile, obviously when we're pitching to clients, you know, it's like Steve said, it's that, um, you know, you're showing that you're trustworthy and that you've got that level of expertise and that you can operate ethically um, and that, you know, you, you've got that le that leadership. You know, you're happy to to push back and challenge back on things that maybe you're not going to achieve, you know, the best outcome for your client or wh whoever that is. Um, so, yeah. I guess importantly for me, obviously the confidence, but I think obviously for for my organisation that I work for, it's that badge of honour for our for our clients and and showing that we're trusted and valued professionals. Um, but I just wanted just to add on the back of that as well. I know that you talked um, earlier, Paul, about the the cost associated with chartership, um, and I do know that that. that We've actually developed a letter that's within the pack, within the Chartership Week pack, which um, members can download and actually use that to actually send to their employer. So it's really worth uh, mentioning that because, you know, we've kind of worked hard to make sure that, that we've got all the key points in there. We've tried to make it as easy as possible for individuals to sell that into their employer so that they understand the value of that. So you know, if you are worrying about the cost of it, by all means, download that letter and tweak it and send that into your employer. Great, and thanks for that. And I would recommend um, 
anybody on the uh, webinar to go and have a look at the Get Chartered Kit that's on the CIPR website and, and have a look over that. There's lots of really useful bits in there. Um, in terms of me and my experiences since becoming chartered, uh, as with CAR, I've definitely felt um, a bit of a lift myself, you know, not necessarily that I was down in the doldrums or anything, but you do swell with a bit of pride and it does give you that renewed focus and, and confidence to be able to, to manage day to day um, dealings that you have. Um, in others, um, I wouldn't say I've seen like a massive change, but I've definitely seen people sitting up and listening a little bit more or courting my opinion probably more than they would normally. Uh, and I think that is credit to being chartered in terms of um, you know, giving you that extra bit of I am the expert kind of um, camouflage on you to say for people to um, notice and um, come and court your opinion more often. Um, it's certainly something that was a motivating factor for me once I've seen other people in other professions within my own organisation who are chartered and just how much their opinion is courted. And I've seen some of that from my own experiences as well. Um, the other thing I'd say is the network of people who um, we're in the chartered assessment day with us, with, with Kat and myself. Uh, we've since had a WhatsApp group, we've developed that network. We, we ask each other's questions. We, um, we've been supportive beyond that day. You know, it feels like we've been through a lot more than just spending a day together talking about our profession. It's, uh, it's definitely some of that camaraderie, which is really great. Um, and, you know, you see that spilling out onto support for, you know, conversations that are happening in social media on LinkedIn on on Twitter and you see the same people supporting and you know retweeting and commenting on each other's work which is great uh, to see as well so definitely add some camaraderie um so that's it in terms of questions unless anybody's got a burning question um, I'm just going to go around the panelists uh, to do a very quick uh, summing up uh, from your experiences um, if there's one thing that you would say to um, people who are um, umming and erring about becoming uh, a chartered practitioner, what is the one thing that you would say to them to, to make them consider doing it? Steve, I'm going to come to you. Yes, uh, thanks, Paul. Um, for me, one thing is key. Uh, chartership is not a preserve for people who, are, who have several years' experience. Even if you have one year experience, draw on those experiences. Don't be intimidated. Try it and you'll be successful. Brilliant. Great advice. Adiba. Um, just go for it. <laughs> That's it. It's almost like a Nike slogan. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Kat. I would say just prepare. That would be my my key takeaway, would be do as much preparation as you can. Um, prepare your notes, make sure that they are, you know, you can read your, either if you're handwriting them, you, you can read your own writing. I did mine on power, I basically did myself like a PowerPoint deck and then printed that off. So just try and make it as easy as possible when you're taking your notes into that, whether you're doing it in person or whether you're, you know, doing it um, through Zoom like I did one, on one of the remote sessions. Um, yeah, just make sure that you, when you've got the notes in front of you, you're not having to fish through loads and loads and loads of papers, you know, try and keep it to maybe one page per answer per case study, if you possibly can. Um, and yeah, just uh, go with it, roll with it. Because things don't come in, in the order that you think they're going to come. Mm. So just roll with it. Definitely. Great. Uh, and my, my last bit, um, kind of following on from Steve, because I think that is absolutely right. I think this is the great leveler it, it doesn't matter what level of um you know profession you are at whether you're you know a practitioner level whether you're head of a director um you know whatever your background is this is about you and your experiences as a pr practitioner and, and you know uh you just have to look at the range and variety of people who are chartered practitioners now uh and you know to see that it's it's not something for somebody else it is something for you so seriously think about giving it a go uh, great thank you very much for your time i hope everyone's found that really useful um do get online uh and look at the get chartered kit um absorb yourself in all of those um different bits of comms that are out there um get yourself a buddy uh, or at least speak to people who have been through the process outside of here and get some honest feedback and, and that and i wish you best of luck with your chartership journey and look forward to welcoming you as chartered pr practitioners soon um, 
the one thing I just want to clear up uh, before we sign off, uh, I did make a bad error at the beginning. This session is only five points, not 10 points. Uh, I thought the CIPR were getting really, really generous with their, with their points. So it's five points for this session, which you can log off through the portal. Uh, it's 10 points if you go through the chartered. So if you go through the chartered assessment process this year and you're successful, you get 15 points from doing this and that, that to add to the overall total. So there you go. You've only got your normal 60 before you get to that 75 magic, um, 75 year total. Um, Thanks, everybody, again, for joining us and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.